what are the main plants that we should never be eating then? Okay, real quick. Uh, up until 10,000 years ago, we lived primarily on the leaves of trees and we ate tubers that grew in the ground, like a sweet potato for uh -huh. a yam. Mm, love those. Yeah, those they're actually, so they're pretty darn good for you. Uh, you were actually designed to eat them. And Very good. 12,000 years ago, 10,000 years ago, we switched over to things that we had never eaten before. And those were the grains of grasses and beans. Now, the reason we'd never eaten them before is, number one, we didn't need to. There's never been a documentation of an ape eating grass or mm. grains. Mm -hmm. Beans are so lethal that five raw kidney beans will kill a human being in five minutes by coagulating their blood. What? Five raw kidney beans. Raw kidney beans. In fact, you know, most people have heard of the poison ricin, the white powder you send to your elected official. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Lots on the way to Washington. Yeah, but that's yeah. another subject. Uh, so ricin is the lectin of the castor bean. And we'll talk about lectins next. A lectin is the plant defense system. These are proteins that are designed to huh. basically kill us in one way or another. Oh my gosh. And so ricin is so powerful that about four molecules of ricin will kill a human being instantaneously. There's a great st study that was written up in one of the journals about a few years ago. They decided to have a healthy eating day in Boston. Yeah. And they serve the kids uh, beans because mm. it's so healthy. Right. Part of the blue zone. Yes. And they had 30 or 40 admissions to the hospital. No way. With severe diarrhea, hypotension. And it turns out that it was all the fact that the beans were undercooked. And beans are a plant baby, and we're not supposed to eat those. And mm. so, no beans, no beans, zero beans, be unless you use a pinto pressure. Black yeah, pinto black, none of that. We shouldn't be eating it. Shouldn't be. It. You weren't designed to eat it. You not, have no defense no system against it. No matter how it's cooked, it. if you pressure boiled, cook, pressure cook it, it's fine. Pressure cook it. What yeah. does that even mean? Put it in a pressure cooker. Pressure the cooker. modern pressure cooker is as easy as a rice cooker. Got it. It's one touch. It's not your grandmother's pressure Got cooker it. that blew up in the kitchen. And... So then it's okay to eat. Yeah. So you can pressure cook beans. Now, the other thing, we weren't designed to eat grains. Now, and... just a quick question before you start there. How much of it can we eat? Does it matter once it's pressure cooked? Here's... Obviously, everything in moderation, but I mean... Yeah, well, like uh, I was so, presenting... Like 20 beans are going to kill me or what? No, if the... you pressure cook them, they're fine. It's all good. Okay, yeah. cool. And, and we talk about how to do this in the plant Got paradox. It. Got it. Um, cool. But my personal feeling is the only purpose of eating a bean is to get olive oil into my mouth, and we can talk about that Got as it. we go along. Okay. So grains, uh, fill, for instance, everybody heard about gluten. Yes. All right. So gluten is a lectin. And again, a lectin is a plant's defense system. It's a protein that actually is designed to act like incoming guided missile attacks wow. on the inside wall of our gut. And these things actually pry open the lining of our gut hmm. and actually break through the border. Really? Yeah, they really do. That's, and that's what causes eczema and bingo. causes breakouts. Yeah, and exactly. Acne, all brain stuff. fog, uh, irritable bowel. Uh, this is actually all part of that process. Wow. And so it, it's fascinating to see people who either have come to see me or have even read the book and then write on Amazon, oh my gosh, you know, I had this horrible eczema and now a month later it's all gone and all I did was, you know, take grains and beans and nightshades away from my diet and mm. everything got better. So that brings us to the second kind of group of things we shouldn't eat. All of us are not from uh, the United States, uh, America. We're actually from Europe, Asia, or Africa. Mm -hmm. Every one of us. Yeah. So, and even our Native Americans are actually not Native Americans. Mm. They're from Asia. Mm. You know, get over it. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, so, none of us were exposed to an American plant until 500 years ago when Columbus started trade. So getting to know a new plant, a new lectin, in 500 years is speed dating. 
in evolution. I, I just don't think it can be done. For instance, the Italians wow. refused to eat tomatoes for 200 years after their native son, Columbus, brought them back because they knew how dangerous they were. They were part of the deadly nightshade family. Really? And they, when they started eating them, they always peeled and de-seeded their tomatoes because the peels and the seeds actually have the vast majority of the lectins. And huh. it, it's interesting. Years ago, I was uh, did my fellowship in children's heart surgery in London, England, and I had a, a house officer from Italy, and he invited me up for pasta and mm -hmm. tomato sauce. Yes. And so I, I, I brought, you know, it'd be nice if I bought a couple cans of canned tomatoes, you know, help out. Sure. And he looks at it, he says, why did you bring me this? We can't use this. So I said, what do you mean? It's, you know, canned tomatoes. He says, it's got peels and seeds. You can't make sauce with peels and seeds. He says, ah, oh, you know, mama mia, you know, what, <laughs> what am I going to do with you? He says, you, you can't use peels and seeds. And I said, why? He says, they're deadly. And I said, really? And he says, yeah, everybody knows that. And wow. then I thought back uh, as a child, my mother, wow. my grandmother was French and she taught my mother that you always peel and de-seed tomatoes before you slice them and, and serve them. So until I went to Yale, I had never had a slice of a tomato with a peel and a seed. Wow. And it, this was, you know, this has come from cultures. Yeah. For instance, peppers, peppers are the same way. They're part of the nightshade family. You'll never open a glass jar of Italian bell peppers and see peels and seeds because mm -hmm. they're gone. And the most striking thing is the Southwest American Indians uh, always peel and de-seed their peppers before they eat them. The hatch chili roast will be happening in another month. And what do they do? They roast their chilies, peel the scarred off part, de-seed them mm. and then they eat them or they make them into chili powder right and you know you can prove this in your grocery store buy a can of green chilies chopped green chilies open it up you won't see any peels and seeds because yeah. they're gone so tomatoes and um peppers, peppers eggplant potatoes and potatoes you know the if you peel them and seed these things you're safer correct safer. but you can pressure cook them and they're fine and they're okay yeah got it now, there's two American beans that everyone should stay away from. Peanuts are not a nut. They're God, a bean. so good, though. 94% of human beings carry a preformed antibody against uh. the peanut lectin. <laughs> we can take rhesus monkeys, our cousins, give them peanut oil, and they will develop atherosclerosis, heart disease. Really? If we... Take the lectin out of the peanut oil and then give them the peanut oil. They will not develop heart disease. So if you get lectin-free peanut <laughs> butter. There, there is no such Dang thing. Dang it. Okay. So get almond butter instead. Yes. It's much so safer. No peanut butter. No, stay away from you it. You should eliminate really it 100% good. from your Absolutely. system. Absolutely. We can take, and this has been done, Men feed them peanuts, take their bowel movements, feed them to rats, and you will grow cancerous cells in the rat colon because they've been exposed to the peanut lectin. Ugh. Yeah. I love peanut butter, though. Oh, I, you know. So I, I can have as much almond butter I went, as I want. And I went to medical school in Georgia. You know, Jimmy Carter, you know, man, yeah. peanuts are peanut everything in Georgia. You know? Yeah. Nope. Sorry. So eliminate do it. it. Gone gone say goodbye this will help me live longer have a happier healthier body and, and then system. i won't have to operate on you you know right. when you have coronary disease and oh you'll go gosh. what i eat so healthy i'm having my peanut butter how many surgeries have you done oh over ten thousand. Ten thousand. do you have the re is that what it is the record no not someone record. said it was a record setting yeah. heart surgery heart surgeries no yeah. no how many heart surgeries Ten thousand. Ten thousand. Ten thousand. yeah it's a lot of heart surgery. what's the cause of these heart diseases so and it's the a reason why you have to do so many of these it's all in the plant paradox. So 17 years ago, I met a guy by the name of Big Ed. It was a 38-year-old 30, guy who came to see me at Loma Linda because I'm one of these surgeons who will operate on anybody. Wow, um, Big Ed. Take the rip. Big Ed. 500-pounder. Big or? Ed, actually, wow. when I met him, weighed 265 pounds. Wow. But he had such extensive coronary artery disease that you couldn't put stents in him. You couldn't do mm. bypasses because there wasn't any place to land. And he's from Miami, and he'd be going around the country carrying his angiogram, the movie of his heart, his cardiac catheterization, and everybody's turning him down. 
And he finally, after about six months of this, comes to see me, and I'm looking at his angiogram, and I'm going, eh, you know, I don't like to turn people down, but everybody's right. You know, we're not going to do you any good. And he said, well, wait a minute. Here's the deal, Doc. I've been on a diet for the last six months, and I've lost 45 pounds. Now, this is a 265-pounder sitting across from me. It looks like a, you know, a biker, um, big gut. And he says, and I've, I've gone to this health food store, and I've taken all these supplements. And he actually brought in this shopping bag full of supplements. He said, you know, maybe I did something in here. And I'm going, yeah, all right. You know, I'm kind of scratching my professor beard and, <laughs> and saying, well, you know, I know what you, good for you for losing weight, yeah. but it, it's not going to do anything in here. And I know what you did with all those supplements. You made expensive urine. Right. And I exactly. really believe that. So he says, well, come on, you know, it's been six months. I've come all this way. What would it hurt to get another angiogram, another mm. cardiac catheterization? Mm. I said, okay. And so we, we get a new cath on him. And in six months' time, this guy cleans out 50% of the blockages in his heart. Mm. 50%. It's pretty gone. good. It's pretty darn good. It's unbelievable. Oh, wow. For instance, statistically, on the best statin drug, you know, like Crestor, Lipitor, with the lowest levels of LDL, uh, we scientists at the American Heart Association get crazy if after five years your plaque burden has decreased a half of a percent. Wow. And we go crazy and we go, oh, my gosh, this is a miracle. It's the greatest drug discovery of all right. time. <laughs> right. And we go, really? So this guy, 50 percent are gone in six months. So I actually was so excited. I operated on him and, and did a five vessel bypass. But what if I knew what I knew now? I'd say, hey, great, you know, another year, this will all be clear. Keep going. You won't need the surgery. So I, I start talking to him about what he did on this diet. And lo and behold, he, he gets started on this. I go, oh, time out. You know, I said, I had this crazy thesis at Yale University that I did for four years back in the dark ages of human evolutionary biology. And my thesis was you could take a great ape, change its food supply, and change its environment and predict you would arrive at a human being. Mm. And I actually successfully defended it and got honors, blah, blah, blah. And so I had given it to my parents and uh, <laughs> went off to be a famous heart surgeon. Sure. And so he's talking about this. I said, wait a minute. You know, this is my crazy thesis. And here I am, this big guy, you know, running and I had pre -diet. You were. Yeah. This is 15 years ago. Yeah, you 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah. You know, running and eating a healthy, low-fat diet. And Why did all the doctors seem like they're bigger? Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. you know, we're giving all this advice. And so I, I called my parents in San Diego. I said, hey, you know, you've got this thesis? And, oh, yeah, you know, it's in the shrine. <laughs> yes. Internal flame. The whole room of your accomplishments. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So I said, send, send it up to me. So I put myself on my thesis and I lost 50 pounds my first year wow. and I lost another 20 pounds subsequently and I've taken it off. And then I started putting my patients who, you know, at Loma Linda, who I operated on, mm -hmm. on this program and their blood pressure went to normal. Their diabetes went away. Their heart disease didn't come back. And so after about a year of this, I was looking in the mirror on one Friday and I said, you know, I can't do what I do anymore because I can teach people how to avoid me. So I actually resigned my position. My wife still calls it Black Friday. When was this? Uh, 15 years ago. You resigned? I resigned. From doing from, surgeries? From, or doing, from being chairman of heart surgery at Loma Linda. Yeah. Wow. Just because yeah. you felt like this I could wasn't do, solving the it actual It wasn't solving route. the problem. It was right. just putting a Band-Aid on it. The surgeries. So, the surgeries. Yeah. I was just, you know, I was famous for four-time, five-time redo surgeries on somebody who kept clogging up their blood vessels. Mm -hmm. And it's like... You could fix them up, but it's like... Yeah. You know, okay. They're going to be back in a couple of years. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I set up uh, an institute in Palm Springs where all I ask people to do is every three months, let me take about 10 tubes of blood out of you and we'll send it to some labs. Mm -hmm. uh, have Insurance will pay for it. Wow. And see what asking you to eat certain foods does right. and asking you to take certain supplements that you could find at Costco or Trader Joe's does. Mm. And that resulted in my first book uh, in 2008 called Dr. Gundry's Diet Evolution. But then subsequently, uh, I've seen about 50% of my practice is autoimmune disease. And People would go, come in and say, hey, what do you know about autoimmune disease? And I'd go, oh, I don't know anything about autoimmune disease, but 
I'm a transplant immunologist, and that means how do I get the immune system of you to accept the heart of a pig, for instance? And I actually hold the world record for the longest pig to baboon heart transplant, 28 days. That's the world record. So I started manipulating the immune system by food. And sure enough, um, you've got an autoimmune disease. We can teach you to get rid of it by changing, primarily getting lectins out of your diet. That's it, huh? And changing your gut bugs to be basically friendly gut bugs. And the friendly gut bugs actually tell your immune system that, hey, guys, we're all great down here. We're down at the beach. We're singing Kumbaya, the yeah. beautiful bonfire. And your immune system is basically the cops. Uh, and the cops go, oh, yeah, we know these kids, great kids. Uh, let's go have a donut. And now, so that's how it's supposed to be. But let's suppose a gang member moves into your neighborhood. Now, all of a sudden, you got, you're putting up bars on your windows and you got neighborhood watch patrols and you're shooting guys with hoodies without asking questions. So what's happened to most of us through some of the foods we eat, like all these wonderful snacks we're talking about, mm-hmm. we've, we've let these gang members loose. And the good guys actually can't eat simple sugars and these saturated fats. They, they want leaves and they want tubers. Mm, so they co- die off. They die off, exactly. So the gang members are running rampant. And now your immune system is going, oh, my gosh, you know, the city's taken over by gang members. And we're going to have armed patrols everywhere. And anytime we see anything that looks a little odd, we're going to shoot and ask questions later. And so what's happened to everybody with autoimmune disease is their immune system is just hyper on guard because it's no longer getting the messages from the good bugs. Chill out. Everything's cool. You know, kumbaya, love, 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 peace and love. And that's what's happened. And it's, it's so cool to get somebody who can just, you know, change the food they eat. They may not want it initially, but when they start feeling better, yeah. they go, uh, for instance, on Monday, young lady, 36 years old, lives out in uh, La Quinta, mm-hmm. uh, was sent to me with what's called chronic pain syndrome. Now, a lot of doctors toss this off as, oh, you're crazy or you're depressed or you're just anxious and you treat them with antidepressants. And she was in constant pain. And it was so bad that she actually had to work from home, Mm. really couldn't move. And she had a kid and a husband. And so she had heard about me. She said, you know, I've heard about you. Um, You know, what do you think? And I said, you know, come on, let's let's do this. I said, what's happening is that your pain is actually coming from nerve cells inside your gut that are being stimulated by rogue cops, if you will, and they're trying to tell you that you shouldn't move. Mm. Um, So let's start. So I saw her a couple of months later in January, February, and I said, how are we doing? She said, you know, the pain's less, but it's definitely still there. So I said, well, you know, just stay at it. If you Mm -hmm. can feel a difference, don't give up. Yeah, yeah. So I walked in um, on Monday, and I almost didn't recognize her. (laughs) And I said, she got a giant smile on your face. I said, so, you know, how you doing? She said, perfect. I said, what, what do you mean? And she says, do you know what it's like to not have pain? And I said, well, yeah, I do um, <laughs> now. Uh, said, she said, I forgot what not having pain feels like. Wow. And it, it's amazing. She said, I just feel great. I, you know, it's been so many years I'd forgotten what, you know, feeling normal felt Uh like. She said, but let me tell you a story. You can't cheat. And I I said, yeah, I know that. But how'd you find out? She said, well, you know, there was this office party a couple weeks ago and all they had, they had some, had some chicken and they had some nachos and they had some guacamole. And she said, I noticed that the guacamole had tomatoes in it. Uh, Believe it or not, guacamole is not half supposed to have tomatoes your your listeners should realize that guacamole <laughs> should not have tomatoes sure. but, uh, she said I figured well the safest thing to eat is to put some guacamole on my plate and have a piece of chicken because you know I want to be nice she said I'll tell you within an hour oh. 
my left elbow just started throbbing and then my hands started oh, man. freezing up. She said, I actually had to leave the party and go home. And she said, I had to lay down and I couldn't get up for about two hours. And she said, and I was trying to be good. And she said, it's, it's amazing that, you know, this could do this. Wow. Yeah. This is crazy. Yeah. So you said you essentially came was, uh, you know, amazing. we're doing heart surgeries, 10,000 of them and yeah. said, I don't want to be offensive here. I'll make sure I'm saying the right thing, but you're now essentially a functional med doctor. Yeah. I don't, in, in a sense, correct. Right? I, um, with not, all, with all due respects to Mark Hyman, yes. uh, Jeff Bland created the, uh, created functional medicine and Jeff's a friend of mine. I don't know what functional medicine. Right, means. right, right. What I do is restorative medicine. Right. All of us have the power to heal ourselves. Now, the guy who said this was Hippocrates. And Hippocrates, uh, brilliant, he, he believed that any organism had the ability to have perfect health hmm. and that every organism had the ability to achieve perfect health as long as the obstacles to perfect health were removed. Hmm. And Hippocrates believed that the physician's job was to identify the obstacles to that organism having perfect health, the patient and remove them from the patient and right. the patient would do the rest. Yeah. So what, what I try to do, I basically do detective work and I think I'm pretty good at finding the obstacles and many of those obstacles, believe it or not, are lectins. Mm. And the other obstacle is you got to get the gang members out of your gut by basically starving them to death and giving the good guys what they want to eat. Starving them of the lectins. Starving them of simple sugars yes. and lectins and saturated fats. Like you Remove those things. Yeah, they, they have nothing to eat and they leave. For instance, I'll give you an example of something interesting. Uh, we actually have bacteria in our gut that enjoy eating gluten. Uh, a lectin. Really? Yeah, they love it. But if you go gluten-free... They leave because they got nothing to eat. Yes. And then a lot of people who go gluten-free and don't notice a whole lot of difference or they just get frustrated and then they, and they have a couple pieces of bread or mm. pizza mm. and Gosh, then all of a so sudden good. their gut goes, oh, you know. Well, it's because <laughs> their bugs that could defend them against gluten are gone. Are gone. Mm. And it, believe it or not, gluten is kind of a, a low-level lectin. There's far worse. The the worst ones are in the hall of the grain. So, for instance, this whole gr whole grain goodness, this only started about 50 years ago. No such thing as whole grain goodness. No, we've gotten sicker and sicker and sicker because the outside of the hall <laughs> has the lectins. And we've been throwing it away. I mean, really, the French, seriously, would they have a whole grain croissant uh, or a whole grain baguette? Really? And the Italians, you know, whole grain pasta. Mm. Well, now it's appearing on the menus because the tourists want to see it. it. Yeah. But the Italians would kill themselves. Right, right. Yeah, the first thing I opened up right here is the most popular nut is not a nut, the peanut. The peanut. Oh, yeah, my gosh. Sorry. It's a and sign. a cashew. A cashew is a nut, too. I can't eat cashews? No. The Amazonian Indians always threw the cashew bean away. Uh, what, if, what if I eat... <laughs> Manipulate it in a certain way and make it into a sauce. And you could pressure cook it. I can pressure cook cashews. Yeah. Then I can eat it. Yes. And what stay away peanuts? from chia seeds. No chia seeds? No. These are all the things people are telling you to eat right now. Yeah, of course. And that's why everybody's getting sicker. Chia seeds. There's two human studies that show that chia seeds promote inflammation in human beings. <laughs> well, what yeah. else do we need to be aware of? I used to be a big fan of chia seeds. What do you eat? So, you eat. What you're supposed to eat. You're supposed to eat leaves. You're supposed yes. to eat tubers uh, like jicama, like sweet potatoes, uh -huh. like rutabagas. You're supposed to eat tons of olive oil. Tons. Really? Tons. I use a liter a week. Of olive oil. Of olive oil. Well, you drink it or you're cooking no, with it? No, I pour it on everything. Oh, really? Yeah, wow. pour it on everything. The only purpose of food is to get olive oil into your mouth. This is what I told Dr. Oz really? a few weeks ago. Just think the only purpose of food is to get olive oil in your mouth. In Crete and Sardinia, they use a liter of olive oil per week. A Spanish study of 65-year-old people for five years, making them use a liter of olive oil per week against a low-fat Mediterranean diet, 
at the end of five years, the olive oil users had improved memory compared to the low-fat diet. The women had 65% less breast cancer wow. than the low-fat Mediterranean diet. And they had less heart disease. Leader a week. Olive oil. Leader a week. That's, can't, a, that's can't the fountain beat. of youth, huh? Yeah. It really is. Olive oil. Olive oil. It's the secret. It's the secret. Okay. There you go. That's the secret. It's not what I tell you to eat that's important. It's what I tell you not, not to, to eat. eat. So okay. the first thing is don't eat grains, period. No grains. No grains. And that includes rice. That includes corn. I just gave a paper at the American Heart Association three weeks ago at the Lifestyle and Epidemiology Annual Meeting where we looked at 